Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Soured. I'm your host, Dominique Lovings, and this episode is not sponsored by Uncle Nearest. I'm going to keep saying the whiskey that I'm drinking every week until I get a whiskey sponsor. And shout out to my best friend, Kendra, for giving me a big ass bottle for my birthday. I'm still sipping on it. Um, for the viewers, you can see this beautiful, warm, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now there's a laugh. That is my big sister. Now, can I, Jan Janelle, we won't do nicknames on here. It's fine. Okay. I'm sorry, Nelly. I love you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I really felt like left, let down because I have a homeboy that was on here and we called him Mikey and it took everything in me not to call him Mikey and I just fucked up right mm. So I apologize. Welcome to the show, Janelle. How are you? Well, thank you for having me. Truly appreciate it. Um, today the whiskey, I, well, it's part whiskey. My drink of choice is an old fashioned, okay. um, made with Knob Creek whiskey. Do you want to tell our viewers how to make an old fashioned at home really quick? I don't know how to make an old fashioned at home, oh. considering that is my signature drink. I've never made it myself. So what I, um, get is this on the rocks. Oh, I feel like <laughs> oh, one of those makeup wow. girls. So yeah. like yeah, the on the rocks line, they have like, you know, certain cocktails, but they make it old fashioned. And considering that it's like a pre-made drink, it will have you on your ass. Like it's really, really good. And it's really not that expensive. I mean, it's cheaper than getting one at like a restaurant so they have a smaller one that's like a single serve okay. and it's usually like five dollars okay um this one is I think like 11 or 12 and you could probably get like a good two three cocktails out of it oh yeah that's that yeah because especially in yeah. LA, an old fashioned is like 17 dollars. <laughs> exactly so you know I mean you could probably make I, it's obviously more cost effective if you're like making it all yourself. I mean, it's always expensive, like the first time you buy all the stuff, but once you buy it, I mean, you had it for a long time, but it does a trick. So, oh, nice. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm drinking it out of my little, my little coupe that I love. It's not the standard glass you would drink it out of, but it's pretty. So, I like drinking out of pretty things. <laughs> So, yeah. it reminded me of the episode do you I don't know I think it was like MTV Cribs and I want to say they had like interview maybe like Luther Vandross I don't know if it was Cribs but it was definitely Luther Vandross mm. and he was drinking Kool-Aid out of like a champagne flute I, I could imagine Luther Vandross doing that rest in peace to him <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah it's just random about Luther Vandross uh like it's, I don't know why it's still hard for me to accept that that man is dead. And every time I hear something, I just be like, oh, Lotha. Like, I, just, I, I just get really sad. You I really love that. The I don't know. Like uh, you know. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the blanket behind me was like creating some extra weird backdrop. So I just mm -hmm. moved it. No, no. Anyway. Anyway, um, I just want to uh, share you with the world again. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, a black girl in West Ham. You know, how did that come to be? Okay. You know, my sister is this amazing interior designer. She has all your interior needs and you pay her because this is her art. This is her, form. we talk about this all the time. <laughs> pay bitches what they are worth. You know, in my Riley boy, you're you going to pay what you owe. <laughs> um, but no, so a black girl in West Elm, um, I kind of started it on a whim, not going to lie. So after it was like the beginning of COVID, mm -hmm. um, after I got laid off from Airbnb, which I mean, that day for me, it was kind of like, a, I won't say like a gift and a curse type of thing, but yeah, I was laid off from Airbnb. I think the CFO sent us an email or CEO sent us all an email um, letting us know like they were going to be letting um, this particular program that I was working with go. Um, a lot of people from the program go. And that was probably sent to us at like 2 a.m. 
by like nine o'clock, I got a text from like my old job saying, hey, bitch, do you want to come back? <laughs> um, so I really did not have like a very, um, a rough transition at all okay. regarding COVID. Um, but I wasn't working full time. So I was just like, let me do something that will, you know, keep me busy and just really kind of just start this kind of like IG specifically dedicated to interior design. I had my own personal one, but it really wasn't, um, you know, the professional, so to speak. It had like a lot of personal stuff. So I just wanted to create a new one. Okay. And, you know, I love West Elm and it was kind of piggybacking. It was like a lot of different ones out there. There's like um, Black Girls in Trader Joe's. I think there's like Black Girls at Home Goods. It's a couple of those. And which I don't even know if I found out about the home good one um, at that time. Okay. But I was like, oh, that's kind of a good idea because I'm like, I'm obsessed with West Elm. So why not use this as an opportunity to kind of like showcase not only like my design aesthetic, um, but, you know, it was a brand and a company that I kind of like really stood behind, still waiting on that like sponsorship a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I started that and it was like slowly taking off and I would get a lot of, you know, comments, um, you know, people in my DM saying, oh my God, like, I'm so glad I found you or I live with them too. You know, it was a lot of black girls. And I felt like at that time there really weren't, there were influencers and there are influencers, um, that are black women in interior design. I just really wasn't privy to them. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was really hard to kind of find them for me. Like, okay. and then when I found them, they have like, you know, 400,000, 10,000, 20,000, you know, some of my followers. So they're very successful, but I just did not know where they were um, in order to connect. Okay. So this kind of opened my eyes to, you know, as, a sect in Instagram that I just didn't even know really existed on the level that it does. Um, I ended up being asked to be a part of this share the mic campaign, um, home edition. Okay. So I don't know if you remember when they had like the share the mic right. thing right. like last year. So this girl, um, and again, and that completely catapulted her as well, but she put together this whole thing. Um, Albi knows is her handle and asked me to be a part of it and essentially you know the whole concept of white influencers white designers opening up their platforms um to black designers right. and you know there's some pros and cons to that people there's definitely has been like some criticism of that concept but honestly for me it ended up kind of catapulting my visibility a little bit okay um so you know i ended up having like way more followers in like such a short amount of time. Um, I just really wasn't expecting it at all. Not to say that I have like that 10K, I'm still, I'm still creeping. I'm still working. That's like my 20, 2021 goal. But um, no, it just really was encouraging. And a lot of people were just so warm, welcome. I ended up connecting with a lot of different designers like all over. Um, now I have one guy that we, we talk regularly. So I'm like, man, I'm coming to New York. And when I do, we are going to have like this whole thing. Like we're just like hella, hella cool. So it, it was nice to kind of like develop these friendships, so to speak, right. in a community with people who have had the same experience that I have had um, in the industry. So from that, I ended up launching my online design company. So I had always had the, I had my LLC probably in like 2017. Mm -hmm. I think mom and I, like one night, um, I asked mom to help me, you know, set it up. And so we were just like on the phone, we were doing it and we were filling out all the informations. But I really didn't do anything with it. It just kind of sat there, you know. Um, I think at that time I was potentially, I think I had like an interview with somebody um, as far as like doing their home. So I was trying to like set all of these things up. Like I had a couple of people refer me to people, but they kind of um, 
did not work out, um, which luckily so to me, I believe rejection is protection. So mm -hmm. I usually don't get upset when stuff doesn't like go through um, because it's a reason for it. Yeah. So I had a set up. I never did anything with it. And after doing a black girl in West Elm, um, one of my friends, Ben, he texted me and he was just like, Janelle, huh? I said, hey, Ben. Yes. So he texted me and he was like, Janelle, you have 3000 followers, but still no design firm. And I was like, you show right. <laughs> it'd, be so, the, it'd be your friends that be having to check you real quick. And I appreciate it. And you. that's fine. But, and you know, like in the way he did, it was definitely, you know, like, hey, girl, what's up? I mean, you know, we've been close since high school. You know, his mother gave me my first internship. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just natural for him to say it. And he wasn't wrong. Like, it yeah. was like, oh, shit, you definitely are right. So I... I knew how to make a website, you know, via Squarespace. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was, you know, I was pretty versed in it because I had done two websites before, really three. Like I did our website when we had um, my sister and me, which was, you know, like just super, super simple. But I did um, my old jobs when I worked with, with Jamie, I did her website. And then we, she had done like this online store and I had set all of that up too. And I did all that shit by myself. So a lot of the learning I had already had. Right. So right. I just took the weekend and, and set up the site. And, you know, I really just kind of said, okay, just get it done. You know, I had to fix my mind to be like, just put it out there. You know, I can always change it. I can always go back, you know, and edit it. It might not be perfect, but right. at least it's out there because the longer it's not out there, the longer I'm potentially missing out on opportunities. Right. And, you know, we're all our own, you know, worst critic. So I was trying to like not be a perfectionist and just like let go and let it be. So I took a weekend and set it all up. The part that took the longest, cause I was trying to make it look legit. And um, hold on, my foot is asleep. <laughs> oh my gosh ah, okay I was trying to make it look you know like be as legit as possible um because you know I you never know what it's going to be and I always just want to have stuff like set up on the back end first that way when stuff pop off you already have all your ducks in a row wow. so you know I got the EIN I got the business license because all of these things you need in order to open up a business bank account because that's the only account types of accounts you can even link to Squarespace for like their shopping cart and you have to have you know all the EIN stuff you have to put all that information in there so that is probably what took the longest and why because you know I had to wait on the IRS apparently the IRS website closes on the weekend oh and like at six o'clock or something girl yeah I was like oh I didn't know the internet closed but yeah, it does. So I had to like, you know, wait to do a lot of that stuff and wait for certain things to get approved. Oh, hold on, you can edit this out. <laughs> uh, I'm, I am going to press pause. Okay. So uh, yeah, um, getting all the EIN and all that stuff set up. Um, and yeah, so it took me about two weeks to get everything um, up and running. Okay. And, you know, I posted on the site and just, you know, let the universe kind of like take control. Okay. I got my first client probably within a week or two okay. of me launching, um, which was, I mean, a shock to me because again, I just remember like in my old job, when we had set up like her online store. And I just remember like for months, every day she would come in and be like, you know, did anybody buy anything? Anybody buy anything? Anybody buy anything? Like every day for months. So I just wasn't expecting to get a client in such a short amount of time. Right, right. So she ordered like a vibe curation. And so basically what that is, is, you know, we have a lot of people who are DIY. They can do it all themselves. 
um, they can put it together. They just need to know like, what looks should I go for? So they just need like inspiration. Right. So that's what I put together for her. Um, you know, I gave her suggestions, like, you know, I would paint the walls, like this light color um, and like show a picture. I wasn't necessarily like pay- picking out like a paint color, you know, um, go for like a graphic rug, you know, like very just general concepts. And she was like, okay, bet, like I can take this and I know exactly what I need to look for. And, you know, like she sent me, she did everything that I said do. And it looked, you know, like really good considering, you know, cause you, you try to, like she had like this kind of like dated sofa. So it was like, okay, how can she had no plans on um, getting a new one. So it's just like, okay, well, how can we work around it and make it work? Like it was black leather. So I was like, okay, we can lighten this up with like the light throws, light, you know, like toss pillows, things to kind of like help lift it a little bit. So it doesn't feel just like, like this black blob um, in the middle of your living room. And it ended up being really great. And then she referred me to her sister and her sister had ordered, um, I think her sister purchased for me twice, um, d- you know, a couple of different packages. So it's just been like a lot of that. And then a lot of people, you know, it's a girl in Houston. I talk to her regularly, you know, be it IG, obviously, but, you know, I'll get like a lot of repeat business from um, a client or they'll refer me to someone. So it just, you know, really, really works out. Even this lady right now, this is probably the biggest virtual one that I'm working on. Um, she is black woman remodeling a house um, in Shaker Heights, Ohio. So if you've seen little fires everywhere, that city is where she has this house and completely like renovating it. Um, I don't know what this woman does for a living, but I know she was like, she can't, she wasn't like a fan of her job, but I will take it. Cause she was like quarantining in Johannesburg. Her family is still there. Um, She just came back for a little while. She's looking to buy a place in um, Harlem, I think. And wants me to help her with that. And I mean, she has a designer in New York. in Ohio that was doing like certain areas where she felt like she needed somebody like physically there. Like this woman, they were doing, um, she was doing a bathroom and kitchen remodel. So I was working with them, but what was interesting was that there was, I ended up kind of acting as this liaison between the two. Um, Because, you know, her other designers, they were white, but they were, not butting heads, but just not having like a meeting of the minds on what it was that she wanted, you know, and there are a lot of cultural experiences. Um, I won't say barriers, but there's just like nuances and differences between how we all relate to each other purely based off of our culture and our experience, particularly in America. So to be able to have someone who can kind of advocate for you, um, because you know, like she and I, I knew exactly what she wanted. So I would send her options and it would be like, great. And so I would just kind of like facilitate that conversation so we could keep the project going. And it's been, you know, like it's, it's definitely interesting when you're working with different designers because everybody has like certain things that they are um that they do and everybody doesn't necessarily think the same way or some things like you might not do it there's no wrong I mean there's some wrongs but (laughs) you know but everybody has their own thoughts and aesthetics and taste levels so being able to discuss that and articulate that in a way where everybody can kind of get it and you know and I feel like for her other designer because they were long distance they are not used to working that way Mm -hmm. so they were coming more from like we just want her to be happy and I'm just terrified because she's not here Mm -hmm. she's gonna come home 
and hate everything. And so <laughs> that was giving her uh, a... <laughs> What was the show? Was it Trading Spouse? Uh, not Trading Spouses. They used it to was like Trading Spaces. Trading Spaces and the girl. <laughs> I don't know what they thought they did, but it was like she said she loved Prince and they gave her like a little red Corvette toy. Girl, and that was it. And that was the only Prince nod. And I hate them type of shows. And I feel like that particular episode they did on purpose. Like they wanted the drama because it was ugly. Like nothing about that space um represented what she said was it was like all the opposite but a lot of times too I have another client that I'm working with back at home actually in St. Louis we she just signed her contract um so same thing it's like I was explaining to her you know she had been meeting with certain designers and they just weren't getting it and I was explaining to her a lot of times certain designers and there's nothing wrong with that but certain designers have this need to put their stamp on what they do mm -hmm. you know they want it to look a certain way that is representative of themselves as a designer mm -hmm. versus representing what their client wants and you have certain people that when you buy their design or you hire them you are hiring them for their look like you don't necessarily have a particular look in mind. You like what they do. There's a designer out here. She was actually trying to poach me a few years ago. Um, and now I'm working on a lot of her projects on the job I have now. She has a very straightforward um, aesthetic and how she even, from what I can tell, how she even runs her business is very much like um, a factory. It's like she, has, you know, five color palettes or five colors that she works with. She, you know, reuses a lot of the same concepts over and over again, and which is fine. Like people buy into it because like they're buying that look because that's the look that they want. That's the look that she has. And she's kind of like mastered that aesthetic and is able to kind of like churn it out like clockwork because you do it all the time. Right. which is you know like very lucrative but if you're somebody who is like well I'm hiring you but this is this is the vibe I want my house to be she probably isn't the person for you as a designer because that's not what she does she does what she does right and that's what you're buying and so to me I feel like which you know that's definitely great and there's a market for that all of that um, my thing is, I would rather be more like a, a Kelly Worsler, where I can kind of like, she has an aesthetic for sure, but all her stuff doesn't look the same. Right. You know, like she might use, a, you know, the same pieces here and there because she makes, you know, designs furniture, but a lot of her projects feel different, you know, and they're very much based off of where they're located. Um, who the client is and she kind of puts you know she has like her signature look but she adapts it to like that setting that surrounding is very kind of like site specific so to me as a designer you should be able to do it all and I'm sure she could do it all it's just a matter of you know are you really serving your client in that respect like for me it is a very much a service-based industry and while there is definitely reason and um some benefits to creating your own kind of style and look because a lot of people do kind of like look at what you do and they're like okay well based off of her look I can we would be you know in sync aesthetically so there is value in that but you should be able to be more flexible and amenable and a lot of people just can't get past themselves because they are more worried about like this particular client she wants her space to be very afrocentric um you know very ethnic it's for like the black community so she really wants it to be representative of that but then you're asking white people <laughs> you know what i mean and while they might you know, you could pull, there are a lot of things, especially now more than ever, 
there are so many kind of like tribal or, you know, influences and a lot of designs where a lot of people don't really realize that it does have like that African um, influence, but, you know, there is definitely the kind of whitewash global tribal look versus really doing something that is um, true to someone's heritage, true to someone's culture, and really kind of diving in and learning about it and being able to produce something that is legitimately representative of that community. Yeah. So that's how I got hired. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell everybody um, like where they can find you and to acquire your services. You know, uh, Beyonce if, or Tina, if you are listening. Yeah, um, JanelleLovings.com. Um, I have all my services listed. I have a myriad of, you know, I do it by the room. So you can kind of easily put a package together. I offer, if you just need like design advice, you could just ask a question and get some feedback. You, I do like product sourcing. So if you're like, oh, I need a side table, I can, you know, shop that for you. Kind of like a personal shopper almost, you know, um, source those things based off of what the look and feel of your space is and give you like viable options. And then it's by room, or we can do like a bespoke experience where based off of the scope of work, I can just create like a custom, you know, tailored experience for you. All righty. So we can do those all virtually, but I definitely am, um, you know, I'm out of Phoenix. So those are more the traditional type of design experiences. Okay, well, all righty then. Well, speak- So now with the shit. <laughs> well, I was about to do a transition. Okay. And, but no, because when you were talking about um, the white people cultivating certain things uh, recently, one of the fashion scandals of the week comes at the hands of guests knocking off the tail far bag. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this. Do you follow Diet Prada or any of that? I do models? follow them, but I didn't, I didn't see what happened today. Oh, sis, the kids came for guests. As if guests is not, is, as if guests is not already in a lot of hot shit anyway, because. Uh, Why? Yeah, well, one of the Marcianos is like, had gotten like sexual harassment charges filed against them, of course. <laughs> so as if they didn't have enough bullshit. And I mean, and I understand the world of fashion, you know, and I, you and I adore the fashion world um yeah but yeah but we you know like i was saying i want people to pay you i want people to pay you know mr you know, Bar. you know this these sexual allegations <laughs> girl it is so... and not to guess that sexual allegations guys i just want to be clear huh i was like i had to make a disclaimer like i'm not laughing at the sexual assault oh no like but my thing is it's <sighs> Like I realize these things happen, but it's like, and I and I know psychologically, this stuff is never about like the physical act of sex. Um, it's usually some type of power play mm -hmm. struggle. Yeah. Can y'all motherfuckers get more creative than that? You know, like the sexual abuse or like, uh, you know, harassment, you know, rape and all of those things. That's a whole other, like, I'm not talking about that. So I don't want to make it seem like I am, but you know how people are in the workplace and you get, you know, like this pressure put on you. That's all y'all got. Like, <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's just like, you know, get it together. And to me, if I was a dude who had had some type, because, you know, this shit don't be coming out the woodwork. Uh -huh. That's the thing. These people, in most cases, um, when these incidents have occurred, a lot of times these women have reported it, but mm -hmm. nobody ever did anything about it. And I now, because you have so that. much, huh, huh? I, I am a victim of that. I understand that. So. Yeah, like they have reported 
So it's just like these companies, these businesses, y'all would do y'all selves a huge service if y'all just actually address them when they came to light. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, like women don't necessarily be seeking like financial aid. I'm not saying that there's not some that do. But a lot of them just want some form of justice. They want this person to be reprimanded. They want this person to be fired in some type of way. Um, Just not to be able to continually get away with this type of stuff. So the fact that y'all keep letting this shit slide. If I was at somebody's big company, HR, I would go through all of these complaints. I'm like, okay, let's go through, do our own due diligence. Because, you know, it could be somebody in HR who was new to the game and they didn't know. Mm -hmm. that two years ago sally filed a report against jim you know what i mean and nothing happened but it's like take some time do some due diligence and like take that type of action and be proactive like i hate that people have to do this in order you know like have to come out create these statements then these women become villainized in the media because they decided to come forward and then people just make these assumptions like oh well she should have did this she should have did that no she did that and nobody fucking cared so you know like y'all would do a lot better and it will be you know as a, if I was like in PR y'all would do a lot better just like saying handling the shit it don't have to be no big media release y'all just handle it you know uh pay people accordingly uh fire people accordingly um and keep it moving like it's just at this point it's like how many times are y'all men gonna keep doing the same shit over and over let's talk y'all just dumb (laughs) that's just the i mean just dumb but like you said, it goes back to like the masculinity thing and the, sh- the power struggle, you being able to feel like because you are this person, ooh, person <laughs> that, <laughs> um, like for me, when it happened, it happened to somebody that was make, that was a million dollar book, you know, mm-hmm. and above. And, and when I reported it, I reported it like several times and then it got to the point where even where there was another situation that had happened uh, with another million dollar book where I was considering filing, you know, like a restraining order against this person. And I had to talk to, Mm -hmm. and I just ended up talking to the, the head of asset protection about, okay, I've reported this. No one has addressed it. I don't feel comfortable um, what could I do, you know, and, and it's getting to this point where I'm going to go to the authorities. And he had me like pretty much go down a timeline of all this shit that happened and come to find out we had an ethics manager that handled all of that stuff mm-hmm. and nobody had gotten to it. And then when, when the, the, my superiors that were on the email, the initial email, you know, one person was like, well, I saw that you had put HR on there. So I felt like I didn't need to do anything, you know, mm. to handle it. And then HR's excuse was like, oh, you had my email spelled wrong. I said, but I didn't get a bounce back. What? Bitch. Girl. You know, like, the thing is, y'all sp- put so much energy and try to like cover shit up and not address it when if you just handled it mm-hmm. it would have been done yeah and that they was- bank on you and they do this a lot they bank on you exhausting you they bank on you know we're just gonna like let this ride out until she get tired yeah and when she get tired then we just gonna move on to the next you know what i mean that's what they bank on yeah so and, and, but for me i felt like the whole thing of me losing my job when I worked at Saks had something to do with that because now it's like I'm on record. I, I've said all these things that have been happening, the comments that have been made to like customers, you mm-hmm. know, and what you know, female cu- customers being you know uncomfortable mm-hmm. um, with some of our sales associates. So it was like, okay, this is going to become a bigger problem. So it's easier for them to get rid of me than it was to address everything else. So 
Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, and it's hard to even say because um, they can make up anything yep. as to why they let you go, yep. you know, and be valid in that. And it's it's even harder than to like prove that that was the reason. Yeah. You know, they can make up all types of stuff. And that's why, you know, like when you be on these jobs, like you just got to be as perfect as possible. But they can even say, well, budget, it was a budget issue. You know, it could be anything. So anyway, that's unfortunate. But no, I did not hear about guests um, knocking them off. But and that's been a whole conversation too, especially with like creatives, yep. with Instagram, Pinterest, people kind of coming in, stealing people's art and um, recreating their art. And it's like really difficult. I remember when um, I was listening to some episode of like on NPR um, and they were talking about like fashion and why it is so difficult fashion wise um, to really like persecute people. And no, it wasn't even so much, was it fashion? I think it was fashion and maybe like furniture it's like once it, if it's a drawing, it's like you can kind of copyright the drawing. Um, once it's in production, as long as it is not an exact replica and something. Right. And by exact, that means it has to be like the exact style of stitching. It has to be the exact uh, fabric. It yep. has to be like, you know, and that's how a lot of times people get away with it because it does not, it's not exact. Like, I don't know if you remember back in the day, um, I think it was extra, either extra or entertainment tonight. They would always like after whatever big um award show, ABS, I want to say, would like knock off whatever gowns and they, they would look at the red carpet and they would see whatever dress and like they would work all night. And by like the next day, they would have had like this knockoff of this dress. Yeah. And it's just like, how the fuck, we, in hindsight, it's just like, wait, how did you just like do that? But again, like you said, it wasn't, it was inspired by those things. So even though like the general concept resembled it, it will be little things like, okay, maybe they use Swarovski crystals, I use sequins. Yeah. Um, so it was, because I remember even, uh, a, uh, Aquajura had called out Ivanka Trump for that, like because hers would be pretty much exact, like it mm -hmm. would be a you know a knockoff, but it was like almost identical, and right. you no, know, but it was one of those things where it was kind of and I I don't know if he, I think they sent her like cease and desist, so it wouldn't have mm. to go to court, so they wasn't infringed upon his copyright. Got um, it. So that was one of the things that uh, where it's kind of hard because even there was a case, a big case back in the day regarding a lingerie store slash toy store, uh, sex shop. Okay, um, I'm like, a lingerie time slash toy store? What store is that? <laughs> uh, and it was I'm called, thinking like, you know, uh, Toys R Us that sell Fenty. You know, like, what? That's like, like, let me clarify because I'm like, um, gotcha. but it was called Victor's Secret um, and Victoria's Secret so um, it was a, <laughs> a big thing where you know they had to send like cyst in the seas and all of that stuff um, <laughs> uh, because they're like yo like you got to change the name this is uh, you selling the same products you sell lingerie this could be cause customer confusion all of this yeah stuff. and so which leads me actually to the bigger topic at hand which is Lil Nas X um so in this video uh Montero I think that's his name in real life call me by your name my name um he has on these um Satan Air Force Satanist Air Force Ones and it has like a drop of blood in it and so is every, that true though okay so yes it is true he who, really but who said it? Who said it had a drop of blood? That's what he said. And they're actually, I know that's what he said, but is it reality? Like, is there a test? Like, who put the drop of blood in? You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm. I'm just saying. It could all be a gimmick. So, 
this is a collaboration that he has with a uh, online, like a company called uh, Mischief. And so okay. they're putting out 666 pairs of these shoes mm -hmm. and people were, you know, reaching out to Nike, like saying like, what the fuck is up, all this stuff. So Nike is just like, yo, we don't have nothing to do with this collaboration. We don't endorse it. And I was telling my um, coworker today, oh yeah. So I was like, yo, homeboy probably about to get sued because it's one thing if it was me and you and we did it. Mm -hmm. And they sent us a random cease and desist, like, yo, we know what the fuck you're doing. Stop it. But the fact but that- But is he actually working with Nike? Like, I'm confused. He's not, like, aren't he's they not Nike? Working with Nike? He's not working with Nike at all. Okay. So, so but they're fronting like they're Nikes. They are Nikes. They are Black Air Maxes. So okay. now he is these Air Max. So somebody bought a bunch of Nikes. Yes. And okay. they are going to customize them to sell gotcha. to the public for a certain amount. Like, oh, like but is he promoting that it's a Nike collaboration or like, I'm going to take these Nike shoes and amend them? It, it looks as if it is a Nike collaboration. Like he is promote he says that it is this collaboration with this brand, but the Nike logo is still there. So they have not removed their logo. So it looks as if, so they now mm -hmm. are infringing upon Nike's copyright. I only know this because of media law. So it causes now, it, and it's also cu causing customer- Because it's, it's more so the confusion because the perception confusion. is, it's a collaboration. Yes, we know- Because you're product. using our product. Yes. Yes. But, okay. Girl, one, I don't believe it's blood in it. Um, two, I mean, this should just be so, oh, okay. So this whole, like, sinister devil worship trope, I, I feel two ways about it, and it goes both ways. Like, part of me feel like it's just, like, this gimmick. Like, do I feel like you really worship the devil? No. Do I feel like um, it is sending the message that as like as a Christian, that it is like promoting a lifestyle that is like unchristian like, sure. But at the same time, it's just like, are you playing? It's just like how I watch, like to me, it's like entertainment. But at the same time, you know, you have like those very like devout christians who are like not about their life they don't want any type of like sacrilegious they don't want any type of like sinister nothing like all of it can be you know gateways to hell i was even listening to like recently and when i mean recently i mean today angela rise podcast podcast and she had interviewed kurt franklin and okay. she was like saying these little you know she was saying phrases he was supposed to finish the phrase and one of the phrases that she said was a line from stomp and he didn't even know what she was talking about she was like well maybe if i say it this way and she was like lately i've been going through some things and he was supposed to finish it yeah and he was like man i don't even like that song that song ain't about he was like i don't even like that that that's not godly that's not i'm like is it not but again, like it was too, you know, like the beat of it was, and I couldn't so tell like, if he was being like uh, facetious or sar sar sarcastic or if that's really how he felt, but that's what he said. So I'm just like, okay, so I can see how people are taking it so seriously because it seems like, you know, like technically that means I can't watch Sabrina, the, you know, the haunting adventures of Sabrina. I fucking love that shit. And when I tell you that that stuff is legitimately, like, I was not ready, like, for the level, I thought it was just going to be, you know, like, a darker version, but not, like, Beelzebub, not we worship in Satan. They be like, hell Satan. I was like, oh, I, 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 I wasn't ready for this, but it's so good. <laughs> so it's like. So you know what I'm saying? It's like, a, it's just, it seems like it's just a gimmick for me. Cause no, even it, like it, back it. in the day, Bone Thugs and Harmony, um, Eternal, East 99, 
they had like this in their book, like back in the day when you had got a CD and had like the booklet and stuff. I used to read that shit. And it had like this whole like demonic um, like passage in it. But, you know, it was called, you know, like eternal and, you know, Ouija, are you with me? My murder, my murder, my murder. Like, I used to love that shit. That nigga shit was just, it was just nigga shit to me. Like, but I just, but, but if you actually paid attention to it, they was worshiping the devil. I mean, maybe that's Allegedly. Going on so fast. Um, but I would just say, like, in the case of Lil Nas X, like, you know, this has been controversial since like last week when it dropped. I just think mm-hmm. that we, and if you have followed Lil Nas X career, he is a fucking troll. And we know that like he had gotten banned, like suspended from Twitter for having like this Nicki Minaj like troll account. Yeah, I remember because like somehow he like figured out whatever, he figured out the algorithms. Mm-hmm. Like that's how even like Old Town Road even popped off yeah. because he figured it out and was able to get all of this like social media success and like viewership because he knew what the algorithm was. Well, the, I ain't mad at him. It was that, but the other reason that it made Old Town Road explode was because initially it was, it was in, uh, it entered the country charts and mm-hmm. so they pulled it. And so niggas was mad that they pulled it. And they was running that song back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So that helped him get Diamond, um, achieve Diamond. Yeah. But even it, it, it's just baffling to me that, and, and when you watch the video, it literally is him trolling because all these people were like, oh, you gay, you going to hell. Like you don't get to have all these things. You don't have to get to do this or that or be this or that because you aren't gay. Which and that's how I felt about it. I felt yeah. like he did all this extra because it was like, okay, how do I stop being a gay ass nigga? Worship the devil. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's people, like, it's all so propaganda. Bad. When, it, when he came out saying that he was queer, people were so upset, white people. Um, niggas that, too. Yeah, it was niggas too, but it was just like, you know, at first I would say it was a lot of industry, like black people that were like, oh, you know, live your truth or whatever. But now it's like this pivot because of this video. But I'm like, you don't even realize what's happening. Like the whole video is a key, like it's hilarious. And so, I know even that apology video, like earlier today, Ryan had posted, oh, yeah, I got to look at the apology video. And I was like, okay, when I get a moment, I'm going to look at it because I just need to know what he's saying about it. And yeah. when I tell you I died, when he was like, <laughs> hey, y'all, so I'm doing this apology video and, uh, and it like cut to the video, I <laughs> girl i fell out but but so, again, you know trolling like he does it so fucking well and i just think that the big issue with this situation is i just got into it uh ryan was on the post with this dude and i think he went to webster with me i don't fucking know how i know this motherfucker but he always say right. dumb shit and i always be okay. like check him um because even little ashley uh sent me a message about him Okay. So pretty much he was a lost cause and don't hold your breath. Um, but Ooh, I want to know. You want to text me who he is. Girl, well, fuck him. Eric Richardson. Don't know who he is. I, I like, I don't know how I know. Oh, him. I've seen his name. He like light skin. Girl, yeah, he a Kappa. Yeah, I feel like he went to Mizzou. Maybe he did. I don't, I don't know where I know him from. I, I, he definitely didn't go to North, like Parkway with me. But you know, you just be Facebook friends with people. You I mean, he from St. Louis, so it's one degree, a half a degree of separation. So I just was like, you know, he made this Facebook status talking about like, let's promote uh, masculinity. Um, and it was something to do with like black masculinity, black men being masculine. And I just was like, this is a hella toxic statement. And so, you know, Ryan responded and was just like, um, exactly. And um, 
he, you know, asked us to explain like what's what's the meaning of toxic bitch. You know what the fuck toxic mean? So toxic, like, problematic, like yeah. it's all the same. So like, st- stop being stupid and stop fishing. So I just was like, listen, the issue with this statement is this: a lot of horrible things have happened at the hands of masculinity. You know, you have black trans, you know, people that consistently come up dead. Uh, mm-hmm. black women and black children solely based on the fact that somebody's masculinity black masculinity is so fragile right like and, in the moment of it's being threatened yeah and you you, you make it personal girl yeah. and we don't have I, to, and so i, I just wish everybody could be justin baldoni a girl look shout out to you Justin, you are doing the Lord's work. Um, like, <laughs> so, so I'm like the fact that I'm even having to say, like, I understand the concept of the of influence. We do live in a social media driven age, um, where yeah, if you do leave your kids sitting in front of a video or TV all day, that will kind of shape their narrative. But that is not society and the media's job. I'm tired of people saying- Yeah, like it's your job to raise your your kids. And so this motherfucker gonna say to me, don't believe everything that you see on the news. But I, uh, with that said, I do agree that people should be raising their kids. I said, what the fuck does don't believe what the media says? It's motherfuckers dead. What do you mean? Girl. Oh, the next thing you know, his uh, Facebook status disappears because I did report it. And that's the bullshit I be talking about. Facebook picks and chooses, but y'all didn't think that was, uh, didn't go against y'all guidelines and all his homophobic statements up in there. Y'all reviewed it and y'all let it fly, but then it just disappears. Oh yeah, all the time. But and that's the thing too. It's just like you know saying, "Bitch, please." It's just like to me, you know. People just need to, first of all, relax. You know, when you think about the stuff that we were exposed to as children, mm-hmm. and not that you know our parents was were negligent in any way, but you know, like the st- the type of stuff that we was listening to. You know, motherfucking shy and Joe to see freaking you. Let me look you up and down. Like, <laughs> and you be in the third grade. <laughs> and I ain't grow up to be no hoe. Not that there's anything wrong with it. And I don't even say that you are a hoe in like the colloquial sense. Like, I, mean, I, like I did not grow up having a ton of sexual part, huh? I said, it's just like how mom let me be Lil' Kim for Halloween. Maybe she didn't know who Lil' Kim was. But for me, I, I under, for me, Lil' Kim made me confident. Like, I felt but like- But the thing hey. is, that was a Halloween costume versus the day-to-day parental guidance that she provided. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, you're not, if you are listening to like one particular artist or seeing one type of like visual- in the world and that completely like distorts and skews how you move through space that means somebody is not there guiding you and that this one isolated incident can then shift how you like grow and mature and how your mind works so it's just like come on like like i said i was listening to jodeci I had that bon- that same Bone Thugs and Harmony on cassette tape when I was in motherfucking like fourth grade. And guess what? I feel like I'm fine. Like, and we all have fallen short of the glory of God. So, you know, shout out to the Bible says. <laughs> but you're just, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not a terrible person. I'm not worshiping the devil. I acknowledge that that's what they were doing. But I'm not doing that because I had a solid foundation. And again, people who out here worshiping the devil for them, shit, they think that's a solid foundation. They think they got it right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, just let motherfuckers live. That's a thing. I don't understand. Like, I, I, that is, so you watch Sabrina. Yes. Personally, for me, 
that's not my jam. I'm like, eh, it's a little too much for me. It has like, but you, I don't, I'm not on the internet picking apart, taking the time to watch each episode to still pick it apart to write a dissertation on it. I don't give a fuck. So you know what I don't do? I don't watch it. I yeah. way like, I don't care. And it has, it just, I just don't be trying to have nightmares for real. But that's the thing too. If you were a parent, you have the ability to have like parental controls. Mm-hmm. Maybe the TV that the kids watch don't have Netflix on it. You know what I mean? Like there's different things that you can do and we all have our level of what is acceptable and what isn't. And some shit we don't even think about. Like I remember back in the day when I used to work at the art museum and I remember like trying to connect with these kids and stuff and I asked this little boy, you know, does he watch like Batman Beyond or like Powerpuff Girls? Not that I watch Powerpuff Girls, but you know, I love me some Batman Beyond. Right. And he was like, well, no. I was like, really? Why not? He's like, because they have punching and kicking. And I was like, I guess these shows are violent. And that's the thing with a murder. You know, like we we love some violent ass shit. We love some Grand Theft Auto. Yep. Um, we love whatever fucking like video game that's out there where it's all about shooting and killing. We love that shit. But as soon as a nigga is gay, as soon as somebody is just not like a Christian, even though the Man, point of this Christian. whole country. Yes. Huh? Girl, I have to send you this episode of Wife Spot Swap. And actually, my oh, yeah, 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 I've seen it. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but that's my thing. You know, like the whole point, the whole reason why, one of the reasons why America was even founded was so people could have like this religious freedom even though it was more so I want to be free of like the church of England or whatever y'all doing over there, which again, like don't have nothing to do. That church was even formed because motherfucking King Henry, the one with which you need to watch, uh, the other Bolin sister wanted to be able to divorce his wife and marry Anne Bolin. So he started a whole new church because they, Air, you know, whatever Orthodox Christianity, whatever it was that they believed would not allow him to divorce his wife in order to marry his side chick. Um, and so that's why he formed a whole new church. But that's of God. You know, what I'm, but I'm just, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of stuff that happens with religion does not have anything to do with Jesus, does not have to have anything to do with God. And the sooner that we can kind of come to terms with that, I feel like people, we would be more advanced in how we move. And I'm not saying don't be religious. I'm not saying don't be spiritual. You can still believe in Jesus. You can still believe in God. But realize that a lot of the... Huh? That's an aura of whatever it is that you subscribe to. Yeah, but realize that man has had a heavy hand Mm -hmm. in shaping what that belief system is like or how you move through that belief system like recently i started listening to uh kev on stage has this podcast um here's the thing and in one of the episodes he mentioned how when he was growing up you know he had been a part of this particular church growing up for you know like 10 plus years or whatever and how his pastor told them that going to the movies, specifically the going to the movie theaters was a sin. Not watching movies, like you could watch movies at home, but going to the movie theaters was a sin. And so like for the longest time, he played into that because again, like you go to church, there is the pastor and this person is supposed to be like the leader or the usher of your like spiritual like development and guidance so it's like whatever he says this is he studied the bible he went to school for this he is you know like a credible person so what he says must be the truth yeah come to find out however many years later when they have switched churches and stuff like that i don't know if he asked his mom or his grandma whatever it was 
you know, why, why was that a problem? And it was like, oh, it's because his son was like fucking in the movie theaters. Well, but, <laughs> but you, but you see what I'm saying? Like, because of his personal experience right. and because he disagreed with it, he felt like, okay, because this one incident happened to me and my family, I'm going to prevent everybody else, or I'm going to use my power right. to let people know that this is where sin happens. When in reality, that is where sin for your son happens. <laughs> Not <That's laughs> for everybody else. You know, don't get me wrong. Niggas be fucking in theaters. Yeah, we do. I'm just saying. <laughs> Niggas be fucking, but that don't mean, but <laughs> niggas fuck a lot of places. That place is no less or more simple nope. than the next place. Sure not. Because my question is, okay, what if it was with your husband and y'all fucked in the theaters? Is that a sin? <laughs> they would say public display of uh, that's action. That might be a crime or a felony, but is it a sin? Yeah. I mean, look, I'm just asking. I mean, listen, I'm not God. I'm not here to judge people. But I'm I, not either. And, and that's the part that people forget. But no, but some people. I am issue. not here to judge. Here, Only here, God. Here is the big can do that. Why I don't subscribe to religion anymore. Do not tell our mama. Um, I don't subscribe to religion um, in the sense of. In the literal sense of like the church and all of that, um, the actual foundation, solely for shit like that. Like we know mm -hmm. the church that we come through uh, came from all the the scandal, all of the thievery, theft, uh, adultery, all the shit that was happening in the pulpit of that church. And even coming out here and finding a new church home, um, you know, I went to, I was going to a very popular church out here and it was the same mm -hmm. shit different city um and then I ended up going to more like a more non-denominational uh church but they had a mm -hmm. VIP section and I'm like yeah this just is really not for me anymore and so I just developed and cultivated my own relations you know spiritual relationship you know like with the Lord and there are things that I question or you know but it's my job to do the work and do the research. But the reason why, and I, I think that's the reason why people have strayed away from the church, especially in our generation, because mm -hmm. people cultivate certain scriptures to fit whatever happened, just like homeboy's kid was fucking in the, the bathroom at right. the door in the city. I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, it's just fucked up. Like I just But I think and I I totally understand where you're coming from and I don't disagree with what you're saying. But I think once people can acknowledge that all of these people who are leaders of the church, the church itself is made up of people and as a people, we are flawed human beings. Yep. And we put, you know, to quote Master P, we put people on these pedestals and we need to be able to like strip all of that away mm -hmm. and know that, you know, like we all have done some shit. As good of a person as someone could possibly be, I'm sure if they look back on their life, it is something that they regret that they did. It is something that they are not proud that they did. You know, it's something that they, I hope my kids never find out that I did that. Even though it might be very mild to some people, but we all have something that we are just like flawed at. Yeah. And if we stop making it seem as though we are above other people, we are, you know, like above reproach. We are above, you know, I, 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 I lead this congregation or no different than motherfucking, what's that man's name? The Jackson dude who came out uh, 
or Jax, whatever the fuck his name is, you know, about his infidelity and all this stuff. Meanwhile, you are preaching um, about how to treat your woman, how to treat your spouse. And now you, you've you created this narrative that you are holier than thou, that you have, you know, like you are so progressive. You are so beyond what all these other regular, regular niggas be doing. Right. That the moment you do something wrong, because you are a human being that you fall so much faster and harder than anybody else would do all because you put yourself on this pedestal and you have allowed people to put yourself on, put you on this pedestal to where you have set this. I, don't, I won't say it's unrealistic because fidelity is very realistic. It's just a matter of if you decide you want to do it or not. Um, but again, a lot of times, you know, like every relationship is different. Everybody is different. People cheat for whatever reasons they cheat, but don't make it seem like this is something that you would never do, have never done. You would have done better being honest from jump. Yeah, you know, I, think, like, I think the situation in the case of a Derek Jackson is that he got his clout, his fame, solely based on bashing men and then you just as common as the next nigga that be doing fuck shit so you just but that's, that's the thing it's like but that's even more detrimental because now the nigga who be doing fuck shit looking at him like see we all like shit you know what i mean and they have no reason to and I, it's not on him to say how you should or should not be behaving but right. a lot of people will use that as an excuse to be like, see? Yeah. Why would I? Look at him. So why would you, you know what I mean? When you could just be totally honest, um, yeah. totally forthcoming, and just say, look, I'm a human being. This is what I have done in the past. And I'm here to tell you, based on my experience, this is how I choose to move forward. Right. In life, and I'm not saying I'm gonna be perfect because, again, like it's hard to break habits. If your habit is cheating and fucking random people, it's hard to break it. No different than like it's hard to break it. <laughs> Why are you saying that? Like that? Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm just saying it's I'm because like, okay, we're, we're human beings. We get used to a routine, and it's not even as as insidious as that. Like I remember, I I started going to work out again after I had the Rona and I was like, okay, I was feeling a little bit more, um, you know, things were less dire. You definitely can't so share this episode with mama. Cause I, no. I already told her today. It's fine. Oh, or I didn't tell her today, but I think I saw her a couple of days ago. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, <laughs> but what I'm saying is like when I was there and I was speaking to, you know, like the coach or whatever, cause you know, they try to like coerce you into doing like, um, personal coaching and I was saying, telling him how, you know, like my, one of my vices is gummy bears and how I fucking love gummy bears and how for some reason I will eat a whole bag of Haribo knowing that at the end of it, I will be nauseous. Like, and not be like, I might now I can eat a whole bag of them black forest, but not the Haribo. I will eat a whole bag of black forest too. But it's something like Haribo. I don't know. I love them all. I, I, I'm i like Phoenix. That's I don't hard discriminate. for me. I don't, she said, I don't, I don't discriminate. I'm less likely to eat a whole bag of Haribo because of the consistency. Okay. Whereas Black Forest, oh, you can eat a whole bag and just be like, but nonetheless, I know, I know for a fact, I will eat a whole bag. Instantly regret it because I feel nauseated. And then it was like, oh, why did I do this? Oh, I'm never doing that again. Go to the grocery store, you do see it a bag, again. buy a bag, do it again. You know, like even trying to get back on like this physical fitness journey and really being cognizant of what I intake, it's still difficult. Went to, you know, I go give me some lunch today. Got a thing to gummy bears. So I get it, like, and I'm not saying, you know, gummy bears is one thing, but you know, a vice is a vice. Yeah. So sex might be your vice. I don't know. And it's not an excuse, but 
I'm saying it's a habit that can be hard to break. And if you acknowledge that, you know what, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to say it, you know, like you can, it's easy not to fuck somebody. Like you could just say, I'm not going to fuck that person. Put You put yourself, when you put yourself in positions to fuck, fucking will happen. But if you don't put yourself in positions to fuck, it will likely not happen. It's true. Okay. So like if you have so if you know you are attracted to somebody, mm-hmm. why would you set it up for you to be in a, alone with that person? If you know that the attraction is so strong that fucking is possible, why would you put your in yourself in a position to fuck that person? Because I want to fuck that person. Exactly. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to engage. You yeah, can be no, attracted to people. No, seriously, no. I explained a, a situation to one of my homegirls uh, earlier, and I just was like, "Yeah, it was a no for me based on this one experience." And this kept happening. I'm like, "Nah, I'm cool," and I just stopped. And I came up with every excuse in the book as to why I couldn't see that person anymore. But I was just like, "But you make it work. If that's what you want to do, so it's all a choice. We all make choices, and sometimes they're good choices, sometimes they're bad choices. But you do better." being open and honest with him, you know, yourself. And I feel like he was trying to have this level of transparency. The problem is he had this level of transparency because somebody outed him. Somebody was like, I fuck this nigga. And now he had no choice but to say it. Um, And I say all of this to say, I don't fucking know. (laughs) (laughs) I get like that's like god dang it where I was going with this I don't know where the fuck I was going with it but I mean we've been here for a long time anyway so it's probably something in the liquor is kicking in for you and you girl I told y'all at the beginning of the episode at the top of the episode this shit will have you on your ass you see it's empty yeah I mean it's still some in my glass but I'm saying lord lord it's a rant (laughs) <laughs> girl you a mess well i'm gonna have to have you back while we do talk about our How have we been on here? is it over already yeah girl it's been more than an hour yes has it it just we had a really great conversation so that should be happening you know when you having a good time but dominique but like when we'd be talking on the phone and we look at shit i've been talking to your black ass for two hours girl i've been on the phone with mama for like four I don't know how you do it. Can't do it. Not to, I just can't. Now I will say now yesterday I had a long conversation with um Mike. We talked for about two, two and a half hours on FaceTime, but it went by so fast and I was like, I got shit to do. I got groceries to buy. And I made chili. This is my mm-hmm. last my, my last pot of chili since it's now hot out here. It's like 80s all week. Did I'm- you make an Uncle Mel chili or did you? No, I took Uncle Mel, our daddy Mel's recipe, and I perfected it to my liking. So I just I, like saying Uncle Mel because it's just cute to me. Uh, no, nah, I so I did his recipe and then I added all these fresh um, peppers and tomatoes. I do that too. And then I added um, turkey, liquid smoke. But I play, I kind of play around with the beans. So sometimes I need to try the liquid smoke because I've been hearing that is like fire. So, I, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you're going to like it. Really? I feel like you're going to be like, no, this is too artificial for me. But I have a homeboy who, because it, it, it's the one, it's like a hickory smoke or whatever. I don't like hickory. So, yeah, it's like, you're not going to like it. <sighs> but it just makes it kind of smoky. But I have a, a friend that uh, makes chili, but he puts like, brisket in it like Ooh. for the real and then he puts like the hamburger meat in it I that sounds fire i see that's what that liquid smoke for i ain't got time see, to breathe when i think of though i i will try it and maybe maybe that's the next time i come to la um you can make it and i try it but like the first time i had like that mesquite like smoked something i don't know if you remember this time we went to like casey masterpiece used to have a restaurant yes i do remember that Okay, and we had these rings, and it was like disgusting to me. We had these what? Wings. Oh yeah, I can see. It. Yeah, I'd be so annoyed. Okay, I straight up had do not disturb. Do not disturb. Like it'd be annoying because 
it still be disturbing. Like well, if it's somebody that means, that means that person called you twice. Okay. So that's that's okay, well, mama. So that's mama calling you twice. So I guess we should end this because she must really want something. I mean, she is in my life. I wonder if it's because she's in my uh, she don't want nothing because she ain't leaving no message. Well, if she's in your um it I, yeah, I, she's I, in my like favorites list but I, I believe yeah. technically even if it is somebody that's not in your favorites and they call you twice the it it, it looks at it as it, it overrides it yeah so that's how that happens got it yeah um I yeah, guess. No, I'm, girl I'm, I'm drunk I'm I, okay <laughs> 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 I told you this shit will have you on your ass. All I had today, I ate some almonds. I had like a half of my thermos of coffee and like some sushi. I ain't ate no real food today. Well, bitch, you forbidden me from eating my fucking chili. <laughs> I wish I had some chili. Yeah. But, oh, um, that's how I make mine. See this, y'all. I'm and then gonna- mama gonna text, I'm good. Head into bed early tonight. With a sweaty mosey. What? Okay, y'all. Mama and my friend Tavisha do not know how to fucking use emojis. I don't know. They overuse emojis. I, I'm not even going to say overuse. In my case, I feel like, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, why are you questioning the think, like sending me the thinking face when you asked me a question and I responded. It does not evoke for you to sit and think about it I, I made a statement I made a response or how mama would be using all the uh-huh. ex- now mama would do the exclamation marks all these other things and I just be like girl she says she does those because she likes red I know she likes red and we- she just don't do do yeah but she just don't do it with us because even like Brittany was like y'all mama be using these like red emojis I'm like or uh punctuation marks i'm like yeah because her favorite color is red and it just seemed like it's so much more effort to use those punctuation marks but you gotta switch the keyboard you got <laughs> girl i was like lord help her oh i guess i could finish reading that book sorry uh, I'm- okay uh, okay wait before we get out of here i just want to let y'all know I need Janelle to have a podcast or a weekly recap of the books that she reads because she is an amazing uh, book report, audio book report, because <laughs> it is a literary analysis. Okay. That's yeah. what we had to call them when I was in high school. They weren't book reports. They were literary analysis. <laughs> well, bitch, that's the way we said book report. So, <laughs> y'all. But and what's that's why my school was the number one high just- school in the Missouri. Okay. Wow. Um, what was the name of the book that you had that you uh, that you read to me, but you didn't read it? To um, me? Uh, it is called Cliff Notes. When No One's Watching. When No One's Watching, y'all. And I believe it's by, I think the author's name is Alyssa Cole. She is a Black female author. And um, the whole book is supposed to be a thriller. It take a while for the thrill to kick in. Um, but when it do, it hits you real quick. Um, I just but yeah, no, because we huh? was talking, I was telling her about it. I was like, "Girl, she's like, what's the name of the book again?" And it came up again. I'm like, "Yes," okay. but it's kind of like a twist on, and I won't even say a twist because you would hate to think that people do this, but I can see people doing this. Um, but a lot of it is about gentrification. And, you know, taking over a neighborhood um, and the lengths that uh, the whites will go, the insidious evil whites, not all the whites, but the Absolutely. ones that is not with us. Yeah. Because um, we do have some allies, but the ones that ain't for us, um, the lengths that they go to, to take over and dominate. Um, 
And so it's very interesting because it really makes you reflect on gentrification in your own experience in your own neighborhood and how these things seem to happen so easily and so quickly. Um, so yeah, no, I think it definitely pop off at like chapter 15, 16, but- Does it have still, chapters? It has like 25. Oh God, that's why you read that to me, shit. Um, I will, uh, so I looked at the publication date, Janelle. It's from September. It was published uh, September 1st, 2020. Yeah, it's definitely very new, and I didn't even pick, pick up on the, I didn't even trip off the publication date, but it was one reference she made to white folks not washing their legs, and I was like, I feel like we was just talking about this. When was this book made? And that's when I realized that it was a relatively new book. Yeah, she listened um, to the read. <laughs> she hella listens to the read. Oh, no, um, and typically, I don't necessarily go for those types of books, but you know, it was nice. And not that, I mean, I have a lot of books. I just like start and don't finish a lot of books. Yeah. Um, that's my issue. But, you know, I think it, it was definitely helpful to have like a book club with, a, you know, my group of friends. So I highly recommend doing that because it just really forces you to commit um, and really take the time to read, you know, like I can't think of the last time I even like picked up a book, you know, one of my friends, he stayed reading and I like envy him for that. Um, but now I've got, yeah, it's fair. Yeah. I said shout like, out to her. Yeah. Nigga reads every single book and watches every single movie. Um, every movie that has been made from a book, he has read the book. But I do have a lot of books. And now that I have like gotten into this groove of reading, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to pick up books that I never finished reading. Like I only read half of them. So now I'm like, I'm done with this one. So let me finish this one. Um, I'm looking at one right now, the ta Coates, um, The Water Dancer. I never finished that. I think I read like three or four chapters and stopped. So really trying to um you know be smarter shit you know this rona had us dumb as fuck at least me i was like i don't know words anymore because <laughs> i wasn't interacting with people no, you know when we were all for it's hard huh i said you wasn't watching word of this hard playing a lot i've been watching word and it's hard and some of them words i get most of them i get so i've been telling robert you know aka to here i've been trying to not use his government name um the next time i come on uh, the next time i come to la i want to be on the show because i legitimately be knowing them words um no, it was it was one word uh one week i'm like fuck the q had me messed up I might not necessarily get the full definition every single time, but the pronunciation I can kind of work through. Um, I'm there like, what? But I'm still mad that nigga did not know Calm the Garcon. Oh my, it's so easy. Um, Girl, he called it Calm the Gracken. Niggas, I mean, he from St. Saint- <laughs> Luminaire. Luminaire. <laughs> Luminaire. Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> There's okay. Let me let me just like fill up fill the um audience in. Look, there is I'm a casino in St. Louis. Why you talking? Huh? I said, I'm about to go get this bowl of chili. while you talking? Okay. Well, there is a casino in St. Louis called the Lumiere. You know, like Lumiere is French for light, oh, I believe. Yes. Um, niggas in St. Louis call it the Luminaire. There's no end anywhere. Nope. Um, I studied French when I was in high school. Um, even if you watched Disney's Beauty and the Beast, the candle, his name was Lumiere. Lumiere. It's not really difficult to say. It's either Luminaire or Lumer. That's yep. how they say it. Yep. I have heard advertisements. Not like just random, regular, regular niggas calling in the radio saying, I went to the Luminaire this weekend. And paid advertisement. And they said Luminaire. That's 
so wrong. So wrong. Dominique, do we have to quit? Nelly, I'm no. fucking hungry. Let me tell you about my <laughs> lunch. Let me tell you about my lunch. So I have gotten, I'm I'm trying to get back. Have a food. liquid dinner. My I, listen, I get angry. I start getting hangry. I'm hungry. Mm. Uh, I'm not a hangry person. Shit. Uh I, I literally, I had some quinoa. I, it was like a Greek meal that I had from Sprouts, which is a grocery store out here. And that's um, where I got my gummy bears from. So you went, wait, did you go into that pail? How do they have that separated now? Like the, um, it's in like the bulk area, but they like prepackage all the bulk, um, okay. nuts and candies and stuff. Okay. Cause that's how I got, yeah. like, uh, they always have like the tubs of them so you could buy them in the tubs or you could scoop them out like the barrels but because of covid yeah. they like pre-packaged individual ones so that's why i got my, my gummy bears yeah the, I, so I, maybe I, they're healthy you know maybe they use organic sugar <laughs> but you still come from the bone marrow of a damn animal so it don't matter well gelatin is not necessarily bad for you i didn't say it was them vegan people though it's the it's the sugar I didn't say it was bad for you. That's them vegan people. That's like, a, oh, die. I'm not vegan. I ain't either. Anyway, um, so it was like this Greek meal that I had. It had kale, carrots, quinoa, and two pieces of chicken on a kebab. Um, why the quinoa tasted like mint, I don't know. It ruined the whole meal. Maybe they had some mint in there. I know it has some mint in there. I don't know why though. It was for the mint because it threw off all the taste of everything else. Oh. Every so, time I think of mint, do you remember the lady Helena used to live next door to Sharon? It was like a house on a corner. Had that, yes, and she had that white dog. She had, but a she had this, this huge yard, and yeah. on the perimeter of the yard, it was like a mint bush tree. However, mint grows was growing right there. I used to eat it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this week's episode of Whiskey Sour Libations of Conversations. I will definitely put my sister's website and her IGs in the description. Yes, it's JanelleLovings.com. Yes. All E's, two L's, um, a Black girl in West Elm which I am currently working towards rebranding. I am going to be shifting it um, within the next month or so from a Black girl in West Elm just to Janelle Lovings. So. Okay. Well, there you have it. Uh, I hate you, Dominique. I, I, I really like that name. Uh, I'm like really kind of sad. I know, but I feel like it's very limiting. Because if I want to do a collab with CB2, can I be a Black girl in West Elm at CB2? Yep. I mean, you could, but it just seems like that's their competitor. Yeah. So the likelihood. I, I understand. I understand. Yes. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about promoting me, um my design aesthetic and my design aesthetic is you know not limited to it includes but not limited to West Elm so I want to make myself as amenable as possible because there's a ton of brands that I love um I recommend I stand by their quality um they are at a price point that is attainable mm -hmm. um you know I really want to start and I've talked about this a lot too, but you know, black people, we have been so conditioned to not feel as though that we are deserving of luxury. You know what I mean? And these, these brands to me are very like mainstream, you know, they're kind of middle of the road. They're definitely like affordable, you know, they're not of the $45,000 sofa that I've worked with before but they are at a very um approachable yet affordable 
cost. Um, and I really just stayed behind it because I was like, the quality that you get for the product that you get is just, you can't really beat it. But again, like I want us, this has been like a whole movement the past few years and feeling like I can get this shit too. And why not? Yep. It's not, you know, like Farrell stay sending me $700 shoes. Be like, which one? Man, I missed my discount. It's like, but it's without a discount. I know, I know. And so, so it's just like, like this should be normalized. Like yeah. we I mean, get so I used to I trying think, to get it. I think we are getting to the space of of that amongst each other. Um and I think our generation is. Yeah. Um and maybe previous generation, like our mama, we they, they done, they lost. <laughs> And and that's the thing too, mama, mama like luxury, but she just like it at a discounted price. You know what I mean? Like we look at her class of all them clothes, like all them price tags. I mean, but the quality of clothing, even for what they was paying back in the day, I'm like, whoo, that's, you know, I felt like that cost was inexpensive, but you know, I, I feel like they, they, they know it exists. They want it. It's just, they, they don't want to pay the price point. So, but it's all depend on what you want and what work for you. But it's like a matter of understanding like what the value of that is. Like, and again, it all depends. Everybody has their priorities and what they feel is worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was telling uh, someone today, you know, we were talking about furniture. A lot of people, unless you're in this industry, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't really give a fuck about furniture right you know and for me I would rather have like I remember we were talking about um when people was getting stimulus checks and he was saying how like Gucci sales went up like 30 percent or something and I'm like I mean you know that's cool he was like I mean I guess you could you could definitely cop a bag for twelve hundred dollars but for me like I won't say for me because I'm a bitch that won't both I want the bag and the sofa but I would probably be quicker to buy a sofa than I would be a bag. You know what I mean? But again, that's where my personal priorities lie because that's what is of value to me. But you can have some people who don't value your shit. Like the coffee table right now that, you know, like it retails for like six G's. I didn't pay six G's for it. But then people be putting their feet on me. I'm like, hold up. It's a six thousand dollar coffee table. Yeah, no, I ain't pay that. But you don't hold that. Yeah. So you know, like, it's just certain things that you know people value, and I think the reason why I figured this out a long time ago, and I remember explaining this to my old boss, mm-hmm. um, why people value other things over like furniture and home decor, because again, these are the things that we value because that's our industry. But I was like, honestly. They value those things because you cannot stunt with home decor. Bitch, yes, the fuck you can. The thing, no, 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 you can't. This is why. One, most people don't come in your house. One. Okay. So you will get more mileage out of a luxury vehicle, um, a handbag, you know, things that are like outwardly because you have been like exposed yourself to that many more people. Whereas nobody coming into your home will necessarily, one, it's not that many people coming to your house. Two, it's not many people that are privy to certain designers of home furnishings. So like, for instance, my coffee table, it retails for like six G's, it's ironies. Don't nobody know what that is. But if I said I spent six G's on a Prada bag, people will be able to, or Gucci, people can recognize that. People don't recognize this. If you have like Italian marble, like a Calcutta or Carrera, on your kitchen cabinet or your kitchen island um, countertop. Yeah. They'd be like, okay, that's white marble, but they don't know how much they cost. Yeah. 
so that's the thing. It's like people don't, most people, unless you're in this industry, really know um, what the value of things are. So, and because a lot of times people don't come into your home, you know, like we have like very affluent, affluent areas, like, oh, I live in Scottsdale, but the likelihood of a lot of people coming to your home is minimal. You could just buy the next YSL and then just get a sofa from Restoration Hardware. So, and nobody would know. Yeah. No, no. So that's all. Well, I thank you so much for enlightening us and sharing your light and presence. Of course. I love sharing my uppity Negro uh, viewpoints and beliefs and aesthetics. And I'm lit right now. Lit in a literal sense. Before we go, I'm gonna give you two uh, a minute or an, a minute and a half. Tell the don't give me no more minutes, Dominique. Man, I don't <laughs> want to do anything. Tell the world something that they don't know about me. Actually, about you, Dominique, don't, or don't, about don't, me? Don't, don't do that. Never mind. Save it for another episode. Don't do that. What don't they know about you? How Barbies is your life? Do they know that? They see it. I do. Okay. I do, I do oh, that's what I could do. Maybe we can figure out how I can make the second bedroom a Barbie like museum. Oh. Or you could just get some make it in there and pay some rent and make some money. Goodbye. <laughs>